talking about. Have you ever been mistreated? You know what I'm talking about. What do you want me? Come here, you fine, foxy fur burger, you. <laughs> Baby, whatever it is, I want you to give me some more. <laughs> Baby, I don't think I can stand much more. You want me, you want me to do, 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 don't let that do put a wrong do in your mind, whatever it is you want me to do, because if you care enough for the woman, you're going to lie to her anyhow, right? Whatever you want me to do. <laughs> Okay, so you in love, that's all. Baby! Well, you want me to... <laughs> From one to nine. Spill over your own dust, your love. You got alligator wine. Alligator wine, you fool. You are a pocket pine. I tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make you. I'm gonna make you. I'm gonna make you. I'm gonna make you mine. 
celebration just pleasant every time I see you. <laughs> I have found that every time you have a birthday, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for having me this year. What did you say about the potato toes? Oh, well, you see, you got to have something to make people interested. You got to be able to walk into a grocery store and say, give me a pound of baked barbecue gorilla ribs smothered in alligator <laughs> soup with a dish of cow fingers and mosquito pie. <laughs> oh, can anybody see you? <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, well, uh, you know, things... <laughs> Mary. I'm not, I'm, every time it does it, and he's still smoking like this right. man has got more cancer. Oh, Look at his body. I don't know what to say. This is what cancer will do to you. Is that a warning? It, it's happening. Uh. He's finished. I asked him the other day. I says, "Why don't you quit smoking?" And he says, "Why don't you mind your business? You do your act, and I'll do mine." Listen, I want to hear about uh, your extravaganza in London. You've been recording there. You have a new single coming out. Another version of I Put a Spell on You, and some right. great people were in the recording studio. We were very fortunate. Someone said it's about time that we rechange the entire decade of music. I said, impossible. <laughs> Disco's what's happening. He says, but the one thing I find that people like the things that are weird, different, and madness. He says, now the madness we want is something completely out of this world. <laughs> so let's take I Put a Spell on You, redo it. We happened to get Keith Richards mm. of the Rolling Stones, who spent a great deal of time in the studio with us. We now have a deal with uh, Polydor yeah, in yeah. London. The record will come out next week. And the gentleman who started the Beatles, his name is Mark Fenwick, is now starting me all over again, but from London in. You know, I've sa I said this before, and I'll say it now. You really have a fantastic voice, basso profundo, you know. Why do you use all of these gimmicks? Uh, rather than just going on and singing, you know, singing in, in, in perfect harmony as you do so well. Well, listen, I thank you for those kind words, but I don't think I'm a Frank Sinatra. I don't think I'll ever be a Tom Jones. Mm -hmm. But I've never found a man, my mother always told me I had a big mouth that would get me in trouble. <laughs> I found out that it can make me a living. This that? is why I scream, this is why I hollow, this is why I do all the weird now, one of the prime movers of rock and roll is Screaming Jay Hawkins. You rock and rollers from the 50s will remember him bringing a coffin from the grave to the stage. Well, he's certainly one of the forerunners of wild antics on the stage when rock was in its heyday. Tonight, he's our in-studio guest with Marion. I'm excited about having you here. I don't believe this for two minutes. Um, I met you in Los Angeles, Mr. Hawkins, and I was very impressed with all of the words that you had to say. Now, I don't know what you're going to do for us here. You know it's my birthday, and I'm toying with the present. I'm so anxious to see what's in it. It would be a pleasure if you open it. Shall I open it, Please and then do. we talk about things? But you know, do. let me tell you one thing that I was impressed about when I was in Los Angeles. You seem to have been the only one there during the American Hot Wax 
uh, press conference that really told us the truth about the 50s and the 60s and what really went down. That's kind of a saga within itself, but how did you yourself as an artist function within, within the realm of things back in the 50s and with a person and or a man like Alan Freed? Well, I should go perhaps um, about a year or two prior before Alan Freed got famous. And he did start in Cleveland, Ohio. And this was in the early 50s. As a matter of fact, I'll go back to 1949. And uh, Freed was on the radio. He come on with sounds like a wolf, a werewolf. <coughs> now, you know, most of the kids in my neighborhood, in those days, if you had black music on radio, mm -hmm. you only had about five stations, mm -hmm. say, out of uh, 25 or 30 stations. So it was like taboo music, race music. And Freed was a different type of a thing that hit us. And right away, we got upset because, number one, we realized that this was a black man, so we thought. I'm making a mistake. Mm -hmm. We thought he was a black man with all these wolf sounds, and he's on a white radio station playing black music, and we went crazy until I met him. And I <laughs> said, my goodness, you're white. You're absolutely white. And he says, I've got a new thing. It's called rock and roll. He's got the big beat, and he had the audacity to put black music on, black, on white radio stations. And I think that... He'd done us a great deal of good. Like, to answer your question, you said, what did he do for me? Prior to him, I was just working the children's circuit. Well, you know, you, you also said out there, too, that, you know, that uh, your, your situation... <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> huh? God almighty. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I'm just getting ready to talk about That's your... That's quite all right. I'm with you, Mary. I'm with you. Let's continue. I'm getting ready to talk about your act. Now, see, <laughs> why did you create this? Henry act? wanted to say hello. You, hello, Henry. <laughs> Are you trying to tell me something? He's looking at lucky happy star. birthday, Marion. I love it. Why did you create this gimmick? Because you do have a voice. Well, I, I created the gimmick because I realized a hit record never lasts too long. <laughs> and uh, when it dies, if you don't have a hit record with it, and being a black man, we didn't have much help in those days. We were lucky enough to get a record, and maybe the record company would give you a Cadillac, and... If you were a little smart and a little cool, they might give you a white lady on the side and a couple mm -hmm. of thousand dollars, and that was the end of it, you know. Was so, it called payola then, those oh, kinds of trimming? Definitely, trimmings? definitely. <laughs> if I blow the lid on them now, they'd have a fit on them. I'd have to put a spell on everybody. <laughs> 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 but uh, I wanted to stay around, so I, I concocted, I come up with this idea of doing something different with Henry here. Yes. I have a hand that crawls, and as Bill mentioned, I get out the coffin. <laughs> Before they made the New Jersey Turnpike, I used to drive down there in a station, I'm sorry, in a hearse, painted zebra stripe, laying in the coffin. And it was kind of weird, you know, coming out of Cleveland or Philadelphia to New York City on the same road where they built the turnpike now. We used to go out there and have a ball. Isn't that something? You know, you be, I'm so glad to have you here on my birthday. It's my pleasure, man. I mean, you're giving me a hell of a send-off. And would hey, you autograph your new album I'm for definitely going to let you have and this what's one. The, uh, what, are the, what are the glasses? Well, what now, are... you have two glasses here. You'll take this one here, and you will find that this one will run five minutes. Uh -huh. This one will run three minutes. But it's the ingredients of what I have in both of them. See, this is dried up worms that I've preserved a long time. I go for that voodoo and that black magic stuff. That's all right. And uh, this here is snake skin. Okay. See, and uh, just turn them over. For example, you're on here on television, and maybe the man says to you on the camera, say, hey, you only got three more minutes, you know, before he <laughs> cuts know. you off. <laughs> Put that up there <laughs> and let the voodoo go for you. Thank you so uh, much. That's my pleasure. That's so my pleasure, Mary. Bill, back to you. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, to both of you. Notice. This is a story about an act that most people thought died about 10 years ago. It's not true. Screamin' Jay Hawk, rock and roll star of the 50s, is still alive and very well and living in New York City. His fans love him very much to this day. It's as if Screamin' Jay Hawkins put a spell on all of his fans. I put a spell on you.
seems that we meet every decade, every 10 years. What has been happening with Screamer Jay Hawkins? You've been living in your, in your coffin for 10 years? No, Bruce, I haven't been laying in a coffin, but I, I can see since the last time that I saw you when we did that, your show with Keith, uh, I've been back and forth commuting between Honolulu, California, and New York City. And when I'm working, I usually, I'm in Europe, or Spain, France, or Germany, something like that. Jay, they're doing a motion picture about the life of Alan Freed, the godfather, the grandfather of rock and roll. What did Alan Freed mean to your career? Well, Alan Freed meant an opening because I met him while I was still in uniform. And uh, it was him also, after I put a spell on you, that put the coffin into my act. So he meant a great deal, but as, I'm speaking personally, as my career, but actually as a black man, he opened up the door to many blacks as far as bringing black music on the white pop radio station. That's not a mask he's wearing. That's screaming Jay Hawkins, really alive and well. Trick or treating for new set of four. This is Bruce Morrow at Star Sound Studio. <laughs> Oh, my God. 